Hello and welcome to Nimasa This Week, the voice of maritime. Nimasa This Week is brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. Did you know that Nimasa's regulatory function covers activities such as marine pollution prevention and control, search and rescue, cabotage enforcement, shipping development, ship registration, training and certification of seafarers, amongst a host of other maritime related responsibilities. All of these made possible by the Merchant Shipping Act, the Nimasa Act, the Cabotage Act, and of course, the SPOMO Act. As usual, my name has not changed. It's Ubo Gisien, and on this voyage, I'll be your guide. I am Hadiza Bala Usman, Managing Director, Nigerian Ports Authority, and you're watching Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's still the Master This Week, the voice of maritime. And on today's episode, our focus largely will be on the Nimasa Floating Dry Dock. Yes, MFDD Nimasa. What is a floating dry dock? You'll get to find out and much more how this huge investment by Nimasa is poised to transform the maritime landscape of Nigeria. You get to find out from the DG of Nimasa about his visit to the managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority about what both parties are doing in their coming together and unique partnership to ensure the floating dock begins operations as quickly as possible. That you'll find out on DG's diary. Of course, we've got our other regular segments for you with a lot to learn about the wonderful world of shipping in Nigeria. So if you're ready, as we always say here in Nimasa, it's anchors away. Introducing the Nimasa Distress Response Call Lines for all maritime stakeholders, ship owners, seafarers, ship captains, whatever your challenge or distress in the Nigerian maritime domain, please call 0803 0685 167 0708 0005 956 0700 0700 010 If you can't reach us on these lines, please call 0700 0700 020 0700 0700 030 Also via VHF Radio Channel 16, call and the massa will respond. Hello viewers, you're welcome to Inside Shipping segment on Imasa this week, the voice of maritime. I'm Bukola Babadili. We are currently on board Nimasa Floating Dock, MFGD Nimasa. And with me on today's episode is Engineer Olu Aladenusi, the head Maritime Seafarers and Safety Standards Department and the head of the Committee of Dry Dock of Nimasa. Please tell us what is Floating Dock. The floating dock is a, a facility used in carrying out repairs of ships. When you want to repair any ship, the floating dock will, will be floated by pumping in waters into the floating dock. The floating dock has pumps and tanks by the wings. So by the time you pump in the water, it will go down. And then the vessel that is set to be repaired will, will move in according to the arrangement of the blocks on the deck. This is always, all, 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 always done by the dock master in line with the docking plan of the ship. The blocks will be on the main deck of the floating dock and as soon as the vessel goes in into the dock, it will, it will 
it will float up again and the water will go out and the floating door will come up and the vessel on the floating dock will be set for repairs. We want you to tell us and the viewers watching what are the benefits of having of the master having this dry dock at the moment to the maritime industry? It's to create employment, to bring in foreign exchange to Nigeria. This particular floating dock, this is the only this is the second we have in Africa, next to South Africa. You can see that uh, because of the lack of the capacity, most of our vessels go to Ghana, go to Syria alone, go to uh, Cameroon to carry out repairs. So because we, we, with this type of floating dock, we're going to create employment, we're going to bring in vessels from other countries, and that will going to increase our bringing more foreign exchange to Nigeria, and then all we will create a job and will increase our capacity in training. Because the, the floating dock can also be used when our cadets will come from school to come and learn few things here, especially the marine engineer and also from the universities. What advantage has the capacity, the infrastructural build of this dock, what advantage does it have above other docks? This floating dock is a new technology. They call it modular because it comes into segments. If you are, if you are working on this floating dock, that is, if you are carrying out repairs on the floating dock, you can remove part of it and take them for repairs. The floating dock itself needs to be dry docked. So while you are doing that, you can still carry out your, your specific, the, the type of job you are doing on the floating dock and remove part of the modules and go and repair them and fix them back. By, by that way, you don't need to close down this floating dock completely where you need to, to dry dock. Ah, you have to dry dock this one as well. So instead of closing down the business completely, you can remove them in segments and take them for repairs while the floating dock will still be working. This is a special feature on this particular uh, floating dock, which no, no floating dock in Nigeria or West Africa has. In terms of size, height? Size, type of equipment, and the, the, the type of uh, arrangement of the, the modular dock itself. The floating dock will be in continental shipyard because of the mechanical electrical fabrication workshops because the floating dock itself required to, to require the services of all these workshops you don't just take it to anywhere you have to take it to a yard where you have the mechanical workshop electrical workshop molding workshop and fabrication workshop we are on the deck of the floating dock on this deck we have uh, positions where we're going to have the block that will take the weight of the ships that will be repaired. So what you are seeing here is uh, the sport leg. Because of this type of uh, floating dock, this sport leg is going to be used to pin her down. We have two of it. So on these sport, sport legs, the floating dock will be moving up and down. This type of floating dock is a new technology entirely. We only have two of these in entire Africa. So NIMASA is the second uh, organization or agency that will have this type of floating dock. So because of the peculiarity of this, it's designed to be on these sport legs. When you put the sport legs, it will pin her down to the seabed, and whenever it is going to pick any vessel, it will go down on, on our weight, they pump water into the hole, into the tanks. On the side, you have tanks. When you, when you start pumping, it will start going down, taking the water into the tanks. Until such a, a time that the, the depth will be fit to admit the vessel to come inside. And already before then, we will have put the blocks in places according to the docking plan of the ship that is coming for repairs. So we have a dock master who does the arrangement for such positioning of the, of the, of the wood, wooden blocks. So as the ship is coming in, it will just drive straight on the block and sit down. As soon as the uh, floating dock admits the vessel that is coming in for repairs, they will now start floating her up and start pumping out the water from the, from the tanks. So it will now come up and the vessel will be up for repairs. So what we have today you can, we are on the main deck of the floating dock. As you can all see, the floating dock is in a perfect condition. 
the way she came from the fabrication yard. You can see the deck. You can see the bulkhead. There are no changes. There are no damages to it. We have uh, three types of cranes. We have the major crane. We use them according to this according to the safe loading levels and the capacity of what we are using them for. For example, if you have to remove the engine, engine from, or you are bringing heavy item on the floating dock, to, you are changing equipment, you are bringing another one in. So the crane will just bring out its hands and take them and bring them in. What you have in the containers, inside them you have blocks of different sizes and for different type of shapes to be repaired. So what you have up there are generators, three generators. As I speak with you, we a, a committee, we had a committee that is having, they are, the meeting is ongoing. We have a committee between the NIMASA and MPA. And then we are, we are talking about uh, the management plan and how to move the floating dock from here to, to, that, to the site, to the new site. Right now we've completed all sittings we are at the point of reporting back to individual management because we have we've sat for almost three weeks now so we are expected by tomorrow to go back to our individual management and report back to them our our decisions on of the committee so the top management of the two agencies will now decide on whatever we have whatever we have come up with from the committee The Director General of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Dr. Bashir Jamo, has assured Nigerians and indeed all stakeholders in the maritime domain that the agency modular floating dock is in the process of being deployed. He made this known in a visit to the Managing Director of Nigerian Port Authority, Hadiz Abala Usman, at MPA headquarters in Marina, Lagos. The DG Nimasa recounted the process the agency has to go through to secure the NPA Continental Shipyard for the floating dock. If you can recollect, the modular floating dock arrived in Nigeria in May 2018. And there are, there are a lot of, uh, you know, front and back between the agency and different uh, facility owners. Uh, if you can recollect, uh, at that time, MPA, they entered into agreement with the Continental Shipyard and the Lagos Channel Management meaning that that facility wasn't available for us to, to utilize it. And uh, other private uh, uh, dockyards, they were not forthcoming. Either they are not forthcoming or the cost of maintaining the, or holding the floating dock there is going to be very expensive for us. And because of that, it's degenerated up to the time I took over. That's one aspect of the challenges we have faced. And then the second issue, uh, we have to go through uh, approvals. Approvals uh, from the Ministry of Transportation, approval from the ICRC, because we have to uh, partner. Uh, the partnership will be that, oh, we own the port modular protein dock, but we don't have the infrastructure to dock the protein dock. Uh, that's one. Secondly, the person that will give us this infrastructure will have to bring him to table, agree and disagree on the modes of the sharing ratio. And then the third, thirdly, the managing partner, the person that will manage the protein dock also must be available to come and uh, do that. 
So for the past, uh, I think, uh, uh, from July till now, we, dis we, ha we have been discussing with MPA. As you know, they are the landlords. Even if they don't have the condemnation, yeah, they will have to look for an alternative way. As a sister uh, organization, they will have to find an alternative way for us to uh, get a place where we are going to put the plot in that. And uh, we got that note in July. So we have to shift our focus now to the Federal Ministry of Transportation for approval. We got that approval in February, just last uh, month. And uh, we were allowed to go ahead with it. Then the second lab is for us to get the approval of ICRC on the mode of the operations and the PPP, the, the, the mode of PPP arrangement. Now we have NEMASA and MPA on board, NEMASA providing the modular protein dog and then MPA providing the infrastructure as continental shipyard, having, uh, you know, taking care of the agreement between the MPA and the continental shipyard or Lagos Channel Management. The MD of MPA, Hadiza Bala Usman, stressed the need to promote the Nemasa local dry dock to maximum capacity by placing the MPA's shipyard at Nemasa's disposal as preferred location. She also noted that MPA was going into agreement with Nemasa to hand over its dockyard, jetty locations, and warehouses all within that area to enable the modular floating dock to be installed. And one of the important aspects is the need for us within the maritime industry to promote um, local dry docking to the maximum capacity. Um, we have seen the request from the NASA for us to provide a necessary um, location where the floating dock um, will be located. We have identified our dockyard as a preferred location and we are going into an agreement with the NASA to hand over um, our dockyard, to hand over the jetty location, um, some warehouses and land within that premise to enable um, the modular um, and floating dock to be installed in that location. We believe that it's an integral part of um, the maritime sector and we'd like to commend and recognize the MASA for, for starting this up and the uh, Nigerian Ports Authority would um, continue to provide the necessary support, um, the, the relevant details as it relates to the um, aspect of um, our shareholding in the SPV will all be guided by the ICRC in how we, we, we conclude on the, the shareholding structure of the SPV that will be established for the modular dock, but as it is, Nigerian Post has confirmed and um, reiterated that it would support it, and we're going to hand over those um, locations within the next few weeks to the master to enable them to um, conclude the movement of the uh, modular um, floating dock from the naval dockyard to um, the MPA dockyard in Apapa. So um, this is a very welcome development for the sector, as I said, and we look forward to um, patronizing and using that um, dockyard facility for our vessels on an estimated time frame of when the modular floating dock will be deployed, Ms. Bala Usman has this to say. Well, regarding our own relationships in terms of where it will be housed, those aspects are very clear. And within the next um, three to four weeks, we should be able to have clarity on it being housed um, in the Apapa dockyard. Um, but the other aspect is um, the operations, the management and operations of the um, modular floating dock. And as I said, all of these are guided through um, the outline business case of the ICRC and that procedure will determine the outcome of who would be the manager and how the management will be done. Um, we also recognize the um, importance of this um, project and I believe ICRC will provide the necessary guidance in concluding this um, selection process of the operator within a shortest period. We cannot specifically tell you when it will be completed because we are not in control of the outcome and the time frame with which that will be done. But as it relates to Nigerian Ports Authority and Nimasa and where the Amudula floating dock would sit for its continued operations, and that time frame is clear. And the GG Nimasa, who is the custodian and owner of the modular floating dock would provide additional clarity on the time frame with which ICRC will conclude on the selection of the operator stroke, um, stroke manager. But indeed, our own aspect as agencies of government, um, that is clear. We have concluded our, our, our own aspect. In his own response on the timeline, Dr. Jamo has this to say. You know, you know when you have a landlord <laughs> and uh, you are asking for a rent, uh, the, the determining factor of when you should, you know, uh, enter the house 
is in the hands of the landlord. That's why when you ask the questions, I allow the aspect of uh, the day and the time to come from the landlord. You have heard it from the horse's mouth. Within the next four weeks, uh, we will have the place ready. Uh, now, the, the second aspect, as you mentioned, on the issue of operations, uh, we have already obtained the ICRC approval. Uh, we were directed that we should move to the Federal Executive Council. So uh, we have the approval for, of ICRC. So we are moving now to the Federal Executive Council. So in my own explanation, I earlier mentioned to you that uh, as far as we are concerned, the operations automatically commenced. But uh, the confirmation of certain aspect of the operations will, will be run concurrently. While we are seeking the Federal Executive Council approval, the issue of managing partner will be moving alongside the issue of, uh, uh, you know, uh, advert of uh, selecting the, uh, uh, those who express interest to manage the protein dog will also run concurrently. So as far as this agreement is, uh, done, is you know, signed, uh, you know, sealed and delivered. So we are, we are good to go. Welcome back. It's still in the master this week, the voice of Maritime. This is where we get to read to you from his Twitter handle at Jamo Bashir. It's important to note that the floating dock is designed to create tremendous economic value within the Nigerian maritime space. And the DG is not resting until the dock comes into full operations. And he says, despite the fictitious stories, without proper investigation. I can affirm that the modular floating dry dock has come to stay. We've concluded arrangement with the Nigerian Port Authority Continental Shipyard for the Nimasa MFDD, that's the short for modular floating dry dock, to become operational thanks to Adiza Bala Husman, that's the CEO of MPE, for the cooperation. The DG goes on for that to say, in yet another tweet concerning the modular floating dock. Hashtag, Nimasa floating dock will provide many benefits for the maritime sector. Benefits such as forex savings, employment, to boost indigenous capacity, develop shipping, plus the training and exposure for the seafarers of the Maritime Academy of Nigeria Oron and the Maritime University of Karen Koko. Thanks, MPA. Thanks, Hadiza Bala Osman. Of course, that's the managing director of the Nigerian Ports Authority. So, let's continue this conversation with the director general of NIMASA on his Twitter handle at Jamo Bashir. The hashtag remains the voice of maritime. Additionally, NIMASA official remains the agency's official social media handles, be it on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Remember, that the NIMASA official website remains the official resource for updates and other relevant information you may require in making any decision as it relates to the maritime business in Nigeria.
I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Nimasa This Week, The Voice of Maritime. And as you've seen, the Nimasa floating dry dock is real. It isn't derelict. In fact, it is in good, pristine condition. And Nimasa is poised with the partnership of MPE and other government agencies and stakeholders within the industry to add significant value to our shipping development. It can only mean one thing that the eventual launch of this massive national maritime investment is on course. And I'm asking you too to stay on course. Bon voyage.